Hey guys, what is up? Ioki here bringing you some Leona coaching session. This is for a friend of mine named Say What. He is a Platinum 2 Leona currently. Looking to take his Leona gameplay to the next level. Uh, so we came to the he came to the right spot. So what I want to point out is that sh uh, this Leona, Leona is running Aftershock with a pretty standard Aftershock rune page, but the secondary page is a Domination page with uh, Cheap Shot and Relentless Hunter. This is straight out of my playbook. Uh, this is straight out of one of the rune pages that I use for Leona. Uh, what I want to point out is that this is not a bot lane where I would have brought that. There are three different pages. Um, primary page stays the same. It's the Aftershock page. And then you could go uh, first option, which is the one that he did, which is a very, very aggressive. I call them the suicide runes. We got Cheap Shot and Relentless Hunter. Uh, these are for your lanes that you are pretty confident going in that there's going to be a lot of fighting in the bot lane. This lane, not so much. Uh, if the, Unless they severely misplay, you have maybe an opportunity to kill them at level 2 and then at 6, but between, there's not a lot of areas where you're going to have, see opportunities to go in. So this is a page where I would have gone option number 2, which is the Inspiration page with Cosmic Insight and Biscuits. Just a little bit of sustain since uh, this is a very, very pokey lane. And then the third option is a Precision page where you're swapping out your second rune page for Triumph and Legend Tenacity. So right off the bat, I would have gone for the Inspiration page, but that's okay. We can deal with this. This is not bad. I like the uh, I like the proactivity. I like that you're coming out here and actually warding, uh, or you know, you know, getting vision, making sure you're not getting invaded. One thing I would say is that if this Cinder was not here and you're standing here, I always drop a ward over here. Same thing if uh, if I'm on the other side. If I'm stacking here, getting vision all over here, I always drop a ward over here. But great job on the proactivity. Uh, typically in solo queue, it's usually the most proactive players that win the game. So, so far it doesn't look like anything's happened level 1. That's totally fine. That's uh, probably in your advantage, honestly. So, good job. Getting out of the base, not spending any time. Good stuff, good stuff. Alright, so we have already scaled our, our Q. One thing is that I'll, I'll say is that you probably shouldn't scale an ability unless you absolutely know for a fact that's what you're going to do. In a lane like this, it's okay to, to go ahead and uh, scale the Q, though. Excuse me, sorry. Had to, uh, had to sneeze. <laughs> Oopsies. Alright, so level 1. This is a lane where you do not want to take any damage level 1. You want to completely respect Soraka's Q and the fact that Le Caitlyn is a ranged champion o over you. So do not take any damage. So this right here, should have seen that coming, back up. I know it gives them lane prio, I know it gives them lane dominance, it le gives them control of the wave, whether they want it to push to them or to you, but that's how you play Leona. Taking any damage level 1 as, as Leona is very, very not ideal. Also, you want to go down a decision tree of two paths. You want to push the lane and push for level 2, or let it push to you, get it under your turret, and then try to catch them while they're sieging. Uh, right now, it kind of looks like you're going for a little bit of both, where you're, you know, you're kind of committing to ADC, or you're kind of committing to pushing the lane, but l look at this. They got level 2, and if the Soraka was good, she silences you, she kills you. Uh, luckily, Soraka did not play aggro there, but um, yeah, you want to kind of... Train yourself to recognize very early in the in the lane whether which one you're going for. And in a lane like this, it, there's no shame in letting them push it to you. There's no shame in just backing up, acknowledging the fact that they have a very distinct advantage level 1, and just let them push it to you. This right here, this is an easy engage. Um, not on Soraka, because as, as tempting as it is to kill Soraka, she probably hasn't scaled level uh, uh, W until level 3, so she probably has E and Q. You can assume that. Also, she's much harder to kill because there's an extra 135 damage required through barrier, and she can take make it uh, ad make use of the Caitlyn heal. So your prio target is right in front of you, and there's absolutely no reason now that they put you in a position where you're both level two to not go in on her. So press E right now. There you go. Great job. The sooner you drop the ignite, the better. Great job. Great job. This should be a kill. Great job. Excellent stuff. Excellent, excellent stuff. So now what you want to do, now that it's a 2v1 lane, this is not an Ezreal with TP. What you want to do is come up, there you go, presence in the lane, baby, presence in the lane, good stuff. There you go, zone her out, man, she's a Soraka. Zone her out. So I like I liked that you did it at first, but now you're kind of like hanging back here for no real reason. There's also kind of like a mantra that I say on stream. Uh, your options open up if you get a kill at level 2. Leo, Le Leona level 2 is literally the strongest in the game. You get a kill level 2, and what you do is roam. You roam. Kassadin is so, so weak level 2 uh, two through 6. 2 through 5, sorry. So, so easily abusable. Especially the fact that you have your E. 
you've won bot lane for your ADC, and they don't need any help clearing this wave, I promise you that. So your options are to press this Soraka if you can't roam mid, or to immediately roam mid. Look, you t you've taken no damage, you, you, you can, uh, you can munch on your on your uh, on your potions or on the biscuits if you end up taking that page, which you should have. But you definitely don't want to win the lane and just do nothing with your level two. So I definitely would have roamed mid here. The more impact, the more proactive impact you can have on the map, the better. And remember, Caitlyn has no summoners now, so the sooner you can go back in on her, the better. I'm I'm. Uh, a little confused about that E, but okay. Okay, I like this. Rotating over, seeing if the jungle's taking Scuttle Crab. Good stuff. Now, you don't want to take this Scuttle Crab from your jungler. A jungler like Rengar definitely needs the Scuttle Crab, so don't take this. Ping it for him. Serving it up on a golden platter. Beautiful. This is the type of proactivity you need to have in every single one of your games. This is really good stuff. Still would have liked to see the roam mid, but it's okay. Because here's the thing, even if you only trade flashes with Kassadin, that's a huge advantage for Syndra. Huge advantage for Syndra. You want to abuse the pre-6 Kassadin as much as possible. Uh, because now you've also locked yourself into a lane where you don't, you, you can't contribute anything. So this, uh, this is what I'm about to talk to you about is something called that I call like the, the, the law of thirds. Think about the lane divided into three different thirds. Here's a third. From here to here is the first third. This is third number one. It's their turf, right? As a champion like Leona, you contribute absolutely nothing if the wave is in this third. Out here, this is neutral term, or this is neutral turf, so the second one. And then over here, obviously, is yours. You can kill them in this one and this one. It's riskier in this one and this second third because a lot of it is determined by, like, which jungler shows up and if they're baiting for jungler and things like that. Obviously, you've already gotten a, a kill in their third, if it's in, or in this third. If it's in their third, you contribute absolutely nothing. You usually can't even help push it without taking a ton, a ton of damage. So until the, the, the wave is either in this third or this third, that's your cue to get stuff done on the other side of the map. All right, Caitlyn's spamming traps, hoping you step on one. Nice dodge on the queue. Good stuff, good stuff. There you go. All right. Now we're back into the turf where it's able to kill. So, hopefully in-game, especially since you have nothing to be doing as support while you're waiting for the wave crash, hopefully you just saw what I saw. And I know I kind of moved my camera over, so I might have already spoiled it. But hopefully you saw this right here immediately. Always keep your head on a swivel. Be checking out whatever other people are doing in these little like dead zone areas with support where like you're not doing anything right now. So you know exactly where the enemy jungle is. You know exactly where he's at. You've got Hecarim here. You win this you win this 3v3, by the way. You hard win this 3v3. So if you can start a fight right now while Rengar's able to be here, just start the fight. Start it as soon as possible. E flash if you have to. Okay, Rengar's kind of in the in the river, so you need to be like reading his body language. Is he coming down? So you'd be using your pings to be like, hey, Rengar. Like what I would be doing here, pinging wise, was I would be put the neutral ping on Rengar, and then ping that I'm going in and target Caitlyn, and hopefully that communicates to him that you're trying to go in on this, because they are definitely in, in your third right now. Huge, huge advantage right now. No E, and she's underneath your turret. We know Hecarim's here. But honestly, if the, if she's this far up, like this, this is probably still a kill. And the longer you wait as a champion like Leona to go in, the worse it gets. Because look, they they get so much, so much free poke on you. Soraka contributes so much more to a lane. She, you know, she's got sustain, she's got poke, she's got zoning. You basically do one thing: you go in and you all in them, or you don't. And uh, don't be afraid to be the guy that's spam pinging. So once again, I hope you saw this as soon as I did. Don't be afraid to be the guy that spam pings. Some people don't like spam pingers. It's the only way to communicate with your team properly. So we know Hecarim is on the map somewhere. You're not able to rotate over there because you're pushed under your turret. But it means that you can fight them because what third are they in? They're in the neutral one, about to be in yours. 
E flash right there, baby. E flash right there. She honestly, a normal E could probably catch that. You guys have four summoners to their two, and one of their summoners is completely worthless. You know for a fact their jungler cannot come. This is a 2v2. Beyond a doubt. So E flash. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say E flash, I assume you do your platinum too. That's it's, it's relatively high. Uh, but it's the animation cancel where you press E and then flash midway through, and it catches them off guard. There's no way to react to it. But uh, you guys should uh, fi find a tutorial on that if you don't know what I mean, because the E flash on Leon is really, really valuable and almost a necessity to play right at a high level. See, this is this is not super ideal because now you're fighting into their barrier. It still might work. There you go. Still going to work, but not ideal. Not ideal. Soraka misplayed. Good job on capitalizing on it. I'd still rather you see. Uh, I'd still rather see you go on Leo, uh, Caitlyn though. Because if they played that just like 20-30% better, you could have been trading a one for one. Also, I want to point out something that you do right here. So you've got them locked down. She flashes over. She drops vision. What do you do here? What do you do? You auto a minion. Do you want to know why you do that? It's because you're not holding down target champions only. Every single time you fight a champion, there's a fight going on in the map and you only want to hit champions, which you should be. Ping. Uh, sorry, bind target champions only. I'm telling you, man, this, this hotkey is a lifesaver. You will never accidentally flash auto a minion again. And it didn't happen to cost you here, but there's going to be a billion games where it does. Because I think you actually use her stun on it, don't you? Alright, that, that wasn't your stun, but it could it very well could have been. So, 100% uh, bind the target champion only key. That'll never happen to you again. It also helps with you maneuvering through uh, minion waves. Because if you, t if you bind target champion only, you're not going to target the minion. You're not going to stray your champion from the input that really, you're like actually... Like, let's say you're trying to just walk through this wave, position in it, and you accidentally hit a minion. It's going to lock you into the uh, attack animation. You're probably going to get punished for it. So... Attack champion only, dude. I'm telling you. It's a lifesaver. Let's see what we're buying. Like it. Love the Moby Bush. Love the Moby Boot Rush. Big, big, big. Huge. If you can get tier three, tier two boots before your enemy gets tier one, I'm telling you, it's so much more valuable than... I see people upgrading that Relic Shield all the time. Relic Shield and then getting like tier one boots. If you can get tier twos before your enemy gets tier one, massive advantage. Massive, especially because you're going to be hitting level six very soon. Okay, the second you see them back off, Caitlyn's going to buy. So the second she does that, you've got two options. Help push this or come over here and cancel their back. You've got, your options are sort of limited when it comes to canceling their back as Leona, but what you can do is you can walk towards them, pop your W, and they panic and they stop their back. And then you've kept them in lane, and you've done something called staggering them, which means that Caitlyn wanted to go back, but now that you've wasted her time, now that you've inconvenienced her, stopped her back, now she's kind of stuck because she has to make the choice of staying in lane and, and only having a Doran's shield or Doran's blade against a pickaxe tier Kaisa, or she has to go back and miss this entire wave. So you don't want to just let them back. Because most ADCs will come like right here or right here and back. If you can come over here and spook them into thinking that you're going in on them, cancel that back. It's huge. It's massive. I promise you. All right, it, it, it looks like you've woken up and you're like, okay, I should be helping push this. I should be helping push this. There you go. There you go. All right, we've, put to, we've pushed it to turret. But now, by letting Caitlyn back, you've kind of like allowed her to play the game that she wants, because now she's got her uh, BF sword. But it's okay. You're going to be hitting level 6 here very, very soon. Okay, so you want to have... There you go. You want to go back and... Uh, I mean, there's not much you can do here. You guys, have, you guys have kind of like pushed too far up without vision. And now... Hecarim's on top of you. So what you want to do here, you can play this slightly different. This is good, acknowledging that you can't change this. Obviously, you're not going to E into all three of them. But you want to kind of, when you're not in immediate danger, you want to kind of like walk back in. 
walk back in, pop your W, you know, may, maybe walk at them, make them make make them uh, kind of think that your jungler's there. Anything that you can do to, to buy Kai'Sa, who's desperately trying to get away a second or a half second of time. Because if you walk at them, I mean, they're, you're, you're playing Leona. People get spooked when, when like, you've got a lot of presence, right? You want to have presence in the lane. If your ADC is in danger, you want to kind of go back it kind of kind of juke back in kind of kind of make them think that you're willing to go back in definitely don't go back in because that's an instant death right but you want to have presence and the concept of presence is like a very abstract thing and it's difficult to teach without just like showing you like saying like showing you a good play where you have presence like this is good presence but it goes for the same for adcs too i've coached adcs that have absolutely no presence in the lane and as leona you have so much presence in the lane i don't know if you've ever seen this famous clip of of, of uh aframu who uh who's a professional support now but back then he wasn't playing support and there's a famous clip where he goes there you go baby support so easy you just have presence in the lane you walk up you have presence baby it's it's a amazing amazing clip and to this day is like the best way to teach people about presence so you always want to have presence every second that you're out here you've got a huge life bar there's a zero percent chance you die just make them sec just make them think twice about running running your adc down have a little bit of presence all right we see rangars on this side of the map we've got our w or we've, we've got our we've got our six all right when Caitlyn locks herself into this queue, that's when you dump alt. So wait. You know what Caitlyn's trying to do. She's trying to push this wave so she can back. So wait for her to six, or wait for her to queue, and there, it's amazing. They, she literally roots herself when she uses that ability. Watch this. Be waiting for it. Be in range. Right there. Dump that ultimate. Dump that alt, and then E onto her and kill her. You know the fight's in your favor. You know Rengar's looking bot. Wait for her to root herself. Dump your ultimate. And there's, it, it's incredible. There's so many ADCs have abilities like this. But Caitlyn is very, very easy to abuse. It's a little bit harder when she has, uh, when she doesn't do that because you can dump your a raw alt, um, which is what I talk about a lot. A raw alt is when they're not previously CC'd. You're opening with your ultimate. It's tech. It's typically a bad practice, but in fringe cases like this, it can be fine. Um, Caitlyn is one of the most prominent, easy to raw alt if she uses her Q. If she's smart and she doesn't use her Q when you're in range, she can eat out. She can net out when you try to raw alt her, and it's much more difficult. Well, when she Qs, dump it. You could be on top of her right now. But instead, all you've done is waste your jungler's time. Uh, you haven't killed the Caitlyn, who has no flash. So, a lot of Leona is just recognizing when people are out of position and recognizing when you can go in. So let's see, we get we, uh, we shove this up. Get some plates. Your Rengar's hovering, so he's wanting he's wanting to go in. He's wanting to catch them when they get back there. So be watching your wave, see how much you have left. Don't give it away. Don't give don't give Rengar's uh, ambush away. But there you go. That was good. That was good stuff, because now Caitlyn's low low HP under the target, or under the uh, the turret. Got Soraka healing her back up. It was a good try. It was a good try. Okay, so when you're doing uh, Dragon, you actually, this this seems kind of uh, not very team player-y. But I will very rarely actually hit the hit the dragon because what it does is unproc your Moby boots. And as an immobile champion with no flash, whose only purpose is to either catch people or you know be able to run away, uh, having no Moby boots is really really bad. So it's good that you only hit it once or twice. You don't want to just sit there, and it's frustrating for teammates because they don't see it from your perspective, and they're like, "Leona's a tank. Why isn't she tanking this for me?" Uh, but having your Moby boots procked is infinitely more valuable than the you know okay so the mistake that we made here this was a good idea this is a good idea we're roaming over here right there you dump your alt during the e so like i was talking about with the e flash there's an animation cancel where you press e and r and you are them during this 0.5 seconds that he's rooted you dump it right there because this is only 0.5 seconds of a root so watch what happens there's that millisecond where he's not rooted, and he R's out right there. 
all it takes is a millisecond of not having them CC'd. So practice your ER. Because this was a really good idea. This is a really good catch. You played it well. You didn't waste your E. You didn't get dragged under the turret because of it. You didn't. You, you played it well. You just didn't capitalize. You didn't execute it well with the E with the ER. This would have been a kill for sure. And unfortunately, what's resulted instead is Rengar inted. So, great idea. Just a little bit better execution, and it would have been an amazing idea. Great play. All right. So I'm guessing, yeah, just upgraded your Targons. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so now we have Flash. Now we have Flash. And the great thing about Kaisa is that even though she's a, an immobile ADC, she's got two ways of catching up to someone that you catch out. If you CC her, she can ult right in. She's also got her E steroid, which is a huge speed steroid. Okay, honestly, this is a little bit sketch. Because you're getting harassed, you're taking free damage, and you don't know where Hecarim is. I haven't seen Hecarim on the map in a while. And even though you've got vision over here, he could be right here. So he could come down the lane, push you over here. Get you in an, uh, a 2v3 that Rengar's not going to be able to uh, get to fast enough. So that was a little bit sketchy. You typically only want to clear out this vision when you've got it pushed against their turret. When you have uh, control of the wave. Okay, we're waiting for our ultimate, waiting for our ultimate. Just pushing it up. Here we go. We're rotating to a fight over here. Bad. I mean great, but bad. Let me explain. You definitely were in range to E here. By raw alting, you are literally just hoping Hecarim doesn't outplay you. The outplay is in his court. I mean crazy raw alt. This is cool to see. But this is not a raw alt. This is a run them down. Remember, you've got Mobies. And you have to assume he used everything to kill Rengar there. So run at him. E Q. I mean, you lucked out that he happened to walk the exact direction that you raw alted, but nine times out of ten, raw alting is not the way to go. It's too risky. But good stuff. Also, you wasted your uh, your ignite. All right. So moving on. Good result. Um, still, still the execution could have been a little bit better. I didn't see this. Let me check this. Let me see what you see. Okay. Ooh, nice try. Nice try. Sometimes you just don't land them. Alright, shove this. Now would be a great time to buy. I'm assuming Kaisa has a couple thousand gold. Probably maybe 2,000 gold or so. She's probably got some decent, decent cash on her. So now would be a great time to buy. Backing ASAP, not wasting any time. Great job. You're doing a lot of really good things. You've got the great, you, you, you've got good idea. You've got good, it feels like you've got good Leona instincts. It's the execution that's going to separate you from a really good Leona to a great Leona. Like, I, I, th this is, you're, you're probably the best Leona that I've ever coached, honestly. But if you, if you, kind of change how you're approaching these fights. You've got the right ideas. You seem to know where to be. You're just not quite executing as well as you can be. Also, don't let the best Leon I've ever coached go to your head. Most people that I coach are bronze. You really need to get into the nitty gritty. When you're, when you're coaching someone from like Platinum 2 to higher ELO, you know, Diamond 1 Masters, uh, it's about the small things, right? That's what's going to make a difference. Also, auto Q auto these turrets. You know they're not back in lane for a long time, and your Q has a four second cooldown. No reason to not be getting the auto resets on this turret. Auto Q auto. Auto Q auto. Auto Q auto. Remember, it's the small things. So you know how to do it. I know you know how to do it. Use it on the turret. Okay, so now we're three manning mid. Ideally, you probably want to be on the top side of the map, not not the uh, not the middle. This can still work. You're just a little more exposed to a four-man collapse, which it looks like they might actually be doing. 
Right now, the major objective on the map is also the Rift Herald. You've got great vision of it. Rengar seems to be 2v1 in the, the Akali. No reason to uh, be kind of... Th this feels like you're forcing, you know? Soraka, Hecarim could be coming around, push you guys into turret. This doesn't feel like this is where you should be on the map. Oh, Hecarim's top. Okay. With that information, it's fine to be mid. But not knowing where Hecarim was earlier, I wouldn't have been mid here. This is this is still pretty sketched because it's, it's difficult to siege against this, and it feels like if you guys get caught by anything, you're just dead. So you know the the risk reward ratio is not in your favor. Okay, so if you ever watch me playing Leona, I am constantly pinging when my flash is up. When my alt is up, I'm looking. My head's on a swivel. I'm looking for anyone that's out of position. That is your number one job as Leona. It's not to peel. It's to be the it's to be the guy that pulls the grenade pin. You want to be the guy that's that's two steps out of position. Right here. Nope. Your combos your combos leave something to be desired. So be working on the be working on the cleanness of your combos. Honestly, know which ones you can cancel into each other. And know when you're against mobile champions that have a buffer. Uh, and what a buffer means is... Um, so like an Ezreal... Have you ever gone in on Ezreal and then dumped your QR? But even though it says he's stunned, he's now he's now jumped to a new location. Or Tristana does the same thing. Most mobile champions have something called a buffer. Where the game is basically saying, Ah, he was close enough to, be, to using his mobility move in time. And uh, you want to be very careful... That you've actually that your stun has actually gone off before you use your ultimate. Some champions are more lenient than others. Tristana, Cassidy, uh, Katarina, Shaco, Ezreal. I can't remember if I said Tristana, but Tristana. They're very very lenient in uh, whether or not Cassidy actually pressed R before. So be careful that you're not wasting a very valuable. Also, this was just super late. This even if you locked him down, this was super late. So definitely your combos need. Some practice. Maybe to even go into practice tool and, and practice your combos. Okay. So, looks like you're going tier 3 into Knight's Veil. Vale. Not a bad build. Leona's uh, build, at the time of watching this, this is Season 9, her build is incredibly static. It's Knight's Veil vale and Zeke's. Uh, Knight's Veil vale is a more defensive item. Zeke's is a more offensive. So I go Zeke's if I've got like a Draven. And I go Knight's Vow if I've got, you know, someone that needs a little bit more peeling. I'm assuming you're building Knight's Vow, which is good. So not much to say about the build. Okay, she used her E right there, right there. Soraka there, not the turret. These guys have hard overstayed their turret, which had like 1 HP. So also work on recognizing when someone is overstayed. I'll pinpoint the exact moment you should go in on the Soraka. She has no more defensive capabilities. Right there. Right there. Even a little bit before. Easy Zenith Blade. Right there. You've got follow-up with Syndra Stun. Kais is able to W. You guys just melt this goat. Okay. You got Caitlyn Flash. That's in your favor. Good job. Okay, nope. This is a bad fight. So instead of going deeper this way... Okay, I was going to say you should go this way. But, uh... Honestly, before even going into the jungle, you should realize it's a really bad fight. Go with the rest of your team. Because now you're out of position. Uh, that was just Rengar's fault. You can't, you can't play the game for him. I have... Okay. I thought you were taking on the cast. That was just a misclick. That's fine. Okay, you gotta be you gotta be very particular about which fights you go in on because Leona's a champion that once you go in, you're not coming back out. So, good recognizing there that that fight is completely doomed. Don't go in. Don't waste your life. Okay, they got the Rift Herald. See, this is kind of what I'm talking about. I feel like if you guys didn't waste all this time sieging mid, you guys this could have been your Rift Herald. So be communicating with your team. Assume you've got a decent read on the map. 
and uh, kind of play towards just be thinking about what's the next next objective. What's more valuable, uh, a risky tier one mid, which you did eventually get, or the Rift Herald? Okay, that's going top. Syndra is going to be in base, so that's going to get that turret. Leona and Akali is incredibly difficult to lock down. Luckily, she just used one of her mobility moves. Yeah, she, well, Leona and Akali, this is pretty much how the matchup plays out. She just, she just shrouds and denies you everything. So, unless you've got, like, a serious, serious opportunity where, like, I don't, I don't even know. She's disconnected from the game. Like, don't waste too many resources going in on uh, Akali. Okay, once again, this is a raw alt. Now, if you had E-flashed, Cassidy doesn't have an R. So once again, you, you know what you should be doing. You're coming in here, and you flash, but then you you you, you alt. You raw alt. The, the odds of him walking into the very thin circle, if you don't have them locked down, the Leona stun is so thin, the odds of you hitting it are actually really, really low. Also, you hesitated so bad, so work on your confidence. You knew that you should be going into, uh, into Cassidy, which you should have. He was definitely out of position. And if you E-flash, QR, boom, he's dead. Instead, looks like he's probably still going to die, but he might get out. Yeah, we had to use uh, Kaisa's flash. So you knew what you should be doing. Your instincts are there. I'm telling you, the instincts are there. The execution is not. So work on these combos. Work on... The, work on. You know that Kassadin's out, so do what you got to do to catch him, but do it correctly. So I'm seeing way too many raw alts. And for a player of your caliber to be doing this many raw alts, you 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 should you should know better. You should know better. If you can minimize the risk of it missing, that's you know, why why would you risk it? You've gotten lucky once. You weren't so lucky there, right? Got lucky on the Hecarim back when you raw alted here. Not so lucky on the Cassadin. Okay, we see Mordekaiser bot. Hecarim there. Okay, once again, a raw alt. And this one was a decent one. Let me, let me watch this one a little bit more closely, because this one might not be one that you should even be dropping. Yeah, his R is very, very low cooldown. And see, stunned? Reposition. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, this isn't even an alt that you should have dropped. You should you should just let him go. Casting an alt is, is just... Unless he uses it, it's just really difficult to hit him. Good follow-up, though. That was, that was Syndra's pick. Good pick by Syndra. Okay, sieging against the Caitlyn is really, really, really difficult. Unless you have Baron, because this is what she does. She just traps... Caitlyn is a siege and anti-siege champion, so unless you guys have a really, really good siege, or you've got a huge lead, which you do not. You've got a 4k lead, which is good, but you also haven't bought yet. So yeah, def definitely don't be picking those fights. You guys kind of got it off easy there. Okay, so we got our Knight's Vow. Bind it. There, yay, you're listening. <laughs> Alright, we're fighting Dragon. There you go. Sweep out this, sweep out this. Your options that you can cheese in this bush with Syndra or just uh, hit the Dragon. Okay, again though, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't unproc your Mobis. There you go. You got a free Dragon. There you go. Now, now start picking Baron. This, this is where it pays to be a, a Shot Caller and, uh, big on pinging you want to be the guy that spams pings because right now you guys have a great baron opportunity 40 seconds with hecarim and even once hecarim's back up he doesn't have his ultimate so you guys are whatever you do here if it's not baron it's the wrong call okay good raw alt i still think that you probably were in e range so and you know soraka doesn't have flash so you probably sh still should have been an e but whatever you guys are getting wrote, see this, this is the problem with chasing people instead of do, going straight to Baron. Make them chase you. Play your game. Walk directly to Baron. Spam ping Baron. Because now, now look, you don't have your jungler now. This, this, 
may or may not work. I don't even think this will work. It's an incredibly iffy call if it does without your jungler. Because even though it looks like you won this, you got a couple kills here and there. Nothing. It pales in comparison to the value that you get out of the Baron. All right, this is one of those scenarios where it ended up working. I still think it's. I still submit it's the wrong call. Because this left it up. This left it up to chance. This actually gave Hecarim a, ch a chance to steal it. And uh, I think walking to the Baron immediately was better. Okay. Walking through the jungle, walking through the jungle. Got a double kill on Rengar. We're running down a Kali. Alright, not bad, not bad. I, I won't give you crap for that raw ult just because she was already locked down, so there's no 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 chance of you missing it. Really, really terrible E. There's no other way to say it. That was just truly horrendous. Okay, we're getting all kinds of free objectives. This this is just a walk it in scenario. This is just a walk it in scenario. Walk it in. Walk it in. Honestly, this is one of those scenarios where you don't hit the turret because you want to keep your Moby boots procked. This really is. There you go. There you go. We're walking it in. We've got TP coming. Rengar's dead, but uh, so is their jungler. So just stand on top of Kaisa, make sure she doesn't get one shot. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. We'll take it. Another raw alt. And and man, I, I hope I hope you realize that even though these raw alts are hitting, it's still not the proper way to play Leona. Because eventually they won't hit. And we've seen already that sometimes they don't hit. And you don't want to make things harder on yourself, man. Like why give it a chance of missing if the EQ is just as valuable? And, it, and leaves a 0% chance of it hitting. Alright, so this, this looks like one of those games that's already over. So I'm going to let it play out and, and kind of sped up. Looks like we just walk it bot. You guys probably get it a, a pick eventually. Um, so I'm going to let this play out in, in, in times 4 speed. And I'm going to talk about what I think you really need to be working on. Because I, you know, I'm... I, I don't want you to take this as like you're a terrible Leona player. You've, you've honestly got the idea of how to play this champion down pat. It's the execution. It's the advanced mechanics that separate people. It, it separates like diamond from master. Like knowing your champion inside and out. You've got the basics. You've got the basics. You know how to play Leona on paper. Uh, what you don't seem to know is how to animation cancel and how to and when to raw alt. I would say over half your alts have been raw, and you don't want to. You that's bad. You don't want that. Unless that's the only way you catch them, you do not want to raw alt. So now we've got a baron. We're just gonna walk it in here. Looks like. Yep. We we choose not to fight. That's good. That's good. Let's look at your build. Yep. Zeke's and Val. Val very simple. Very easy. Um. So you know, I would have gone the inspiration page. I would work on. Presence and lane, I would work on knowing when and how to stop their backs. Because I'm telling you, man, it's such a valuable skill to to, to keep an ADC that has a uh, an item that they want to buy, keep them in lane, or make them choose between missing the, the waves. It's massive, and staggering them, separating that that Soraka. Because you didn't, you're not going to stop Soraka's back. You're going to stop Caitlyn's back. So then Soraka's going to go back, come back to lane alone, set up more opportunities for you to diver, or you know, it's just, it's just really a very very uh, important skill that I think goes overlooked. Okay, not really anything to say about these fights, you know, you wasted flash, oh well. Fight, game's looking pretty over. Uh, definitely work on the, the cleanness of your combos, understanding that champion, the champions that can walk out of them and buffer a mobility move. Uh, but I think you've got some really great fundamentals to work with, and uh, I look forward to hearing your progress, man. Let me know if you uh, continue climbing, if you hit if you hit diamond during the preseason. And Leona players, if this coaching session helped you, let me know down in the comments. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in getting a coaching session yourself, definitely let me know and we can set that up. But um, say what? Hope this helped, dude. 
and take it easy. If you've got any questions, you know where to find me. Find me on stream. Find, you know, comment on my YouTube. Message me on Discord. Wherever, you know, wherever. I'm, I'm always available. Hit me up on MySpace. Uh, but take it easy, guys. Hope, hope this helped. Peace.